Now it's the 1st of December, so it's the season to enjoy some Christmas cake. And Catherine Layden is in the kitchen this morning making it up for us. Good morning to you, Catherine. Good morning, Is Alan. this the time you would make your Christmas cake? Because well, no. you do leave, because the you pudding you can make earlier, much earlier, yeah, can't you? And, and indeed, a rich Christmas cake. This is a much lighter one because I find nowadays, Alan, people are not keen on the very rich food cakes. They prefer a lighter one. Right. And this, is, this recipe is perfect for that. Okay. Now, first thing is, because of all the ingredients involved in the Christmas cake or a pun pudding, get them lined up before you start so you won't leave anything out. I've had people call me to say they were halfway through the Christmas cake. And something was missing. And the phone, phone rang, came back, put the cake in the oven, no eggs in it, found the eggs afterwards. <laughs> so by doing this, you have everything together, first of all. Now, to make it simple, I divided it into what I call two lots. Lot one and lot two. Okay. For lot one, I put into the mixing bowl my 175 grams, that's six ounces, of our dark or light muscovado sugar. I'm putting in um, 225 grams, that's eight ounces of our cream plain flour. And to that, I've added some mixed spice and some cinnamon. So I'm really using an all in one method to start this, Alan, actually. When you say some, how much basically? Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon, okay. yeah. Now, into that I'm putting the grate rind of an orange and a lemon. And I'm also going to add my 175 grams, that's six ounces of butter or margarine. Now, it's best to have this at room temperature because if it's not, when you add your eggs, the mixture will curdle. Okay. But if you don't get it out of the fridge the night before, some people tip it into the microwave. Now, I don't recommend that because it melts very, very quickly. Yes, of course and if that melts, you'll have the grease coming around your cake as it's baking. So, a tip for you, heat the bowl, put boiling water into your bowl before you start. And put right? the butter in. And then put the butter into the hot bowl. Okay. Also, by breaking the, gra the grain in the butter of the marge, as I'm doing here with a knife, it will allow it to blend a lot better and a lot quicker. So, really, really simple, if we can get it out of the... My hands are slippy from it. Oh. Get it Stick in my there. hands in, as the fellow says. Yeah, get it in there. Get it in there, Cynthia. Yeah. <laughs> now, so I'm going to turn that on to a low heat while we... Sorry, we forgot the eggs. Good job, I have now them here beside that, me. There see? we go. Four eggs. Now, you don't have to beat the eggs, but I find if you beat the eggs, first of all, you get the blending done a lot quicker. Over here, I have the second lot, as we call it. I have 500 grams of mixed fruit, or a fruit mix. Now, you can buy the fruit mix, or you can make your own combination of um, sultanas, raisins, a few candied peel, cherries, but I add cherries and candied peel as well. So in there, we put the fruit mix. Again, once we've added the ingredient, we put the bowl to the other side. Here I have, now, this is a 200 gram. I'm putting 100 grams of candied peel in and 100 grams of cherries, which is just half this tub here, right? But you'd really have to like baking to do this, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm going out of that. I'm doing this all my life. I now, know, but I mean, I, I know some people so look forward to it, don't, don't well, they? Absolutely. It's like well, the big thing is they set, they set a time aside to make the Christmas cake. Well, and I'll they make a couple of them. Well, absolutely. Because I've got presents from people yeah. who bake the Christmas but cake. But you know what I love the best of all is the smell of the cake baking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the house. So now there we have the um, 100 grams of ground almonds and 100 grams of flaked almonds or chopped almonds. Now you just mix these ingredients together and having done that now you see that ingredients is lovely and creamy. I see a little bit of brandy. Is that brandy over there? Well tip a little bit of brandy into it now, yep. Would you tip a little bit of brandy? Tip a little bit of brandy in. See that lovely Look mixture? That, yeah. That's what it looks like now. So to that we're going to add lot two to lot one. Tip that all in. And then just mix it all back again. And then about two tablespoonfuls of brandy. Two tablespoons? Oh, two tablespoons, yeah. Oh, look at that. Go on, just throw side. it in there. Right, it's grand. Love it in there. Now, uh -huh. if you don't want to put the brandy in, you could use orange juice or lemon juice. And do you think the brandy adds to it? Just a small amount. Yeah. I do like to put brandy on the cake when it's baked. Oh, when it's cooled. Over the top. Because I find if you put the brandy in at this stage, Alan, I find it evaporates during baking. You don't get the benefit don't of the get taste. The taste of no. it, okay. So by doing what I'm doing there, and of course you people will get won't the benefit. like a brandy taste, so just don't put it in. Don't put it in, yeah. Mm. So just leave it out and use orange juice or lemon juice. Now that's the consistency, nice soft consistency. And I'm going to bake this in a an eight-inch deep cake tin, which I have lined with greaseproof paper. And I'll just hold it up now to show you. We'll just get all that off. 
That's fine. And we'll... How long does this go in for then, Catherine? Now, this goes into a preheated oven, 120 centigrade, 220 Fahrenheit, gas mark a half. But nowadays, I'd, put, talk while I'm, I'd get to see him while I'm talking to you. Nowadays, ovens vary greatly. Mm. And I find a oh, lot of... fan assisted ovens yeah, and all that. And I find a lot of the modern ovens are super efficient. They're baking a lot quicker than the years back. Yeah. Now, this would take normally about three to four hours to bake. Three to four in hours? In the old days, in oh. the old days. I bake mine in a fan oven at... It took exactly three and a half hours. Three so I suggest half, wow. you check, yeah. And how I do suggest you know when it's ready? You, you, now don't open the oven door for about two hours, right? Then you can just, when you're, if you tap it and it's fairly solid, you can put a skewer or a knife in. And if that comes out clean, now a bit moisture, don't worry about a bit of moisture, but mm -hmm. clean, your cake is baked. Then you leave it in the tin to go cold. And, and when then it's put cold... It in the oven. No, when it's baked, you take it out, oh. leave it in the tin to go cold. All right. And we'll just press this out now evenly in the tin. And when it's gone cold, you can pour, as I said, some brandy over it. And I then you, you store it. You have it here. That you've iced this beautifully. I've got one ice. I would come on to that now in just a second. Well, we don't have time to come on to a category because we're running out of time, so... Well, here's the one we've baked. Yeah, so the icing then... I'm just going to cut this now for you. The icing, you'll have to come back next and show us how you do the icing, because the icing looks amazing. It's very simple. Is yeah. it? Yeah, we can do that. Now, just in with it. Yeah. And I'm just going to cut it into fingers for you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's perfect, isn't yeah. that just gorgeous? So now, We'll just cut it into fingers. So you're saying roughly about three and a half hours. Three should, and a half hours. So don't even attempt to open your oven for about two. Two hours, yeah, and then yeah. keep checking it. Okay. Because ovens all vary. So now, that, Catherine, that looks absolutely delicious. It was a slice of that there. Get a cup of tea now for yourself. A cup of tea ready here. Christmas now. cake at hand. Catherine, as always, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome.